is not everybody's cup of tea. But these school children look happy enough as they come to attend a very special lecture on the wonders and value of mathematics. Yeah, I love the subject. You love the subject. Many people think maths, I can't do maths. You don't feel like that? No, I, I find it really interesting. Manjul is my personal hero and I think the hero for many, many kids. And what better to have somebody of his caliber, his articulation come, come excite all of us about our mathematics. The basic thing to know about Sanskrit poetry is that it consists of two kinds of syllables, short syllables and long syllables. In Sanskrit, something even more uh, is true about these stressed and unstressed syllables, namely that the unstressed syllables are short, the stressed syllables are long. So a short syllable you can think of as lasting one beat, and a long syllable lasts two beats of time. Well, one thing that arose for poets over 2,000 years ago was the question, Suppose you have a certain number of beats left in, your, in the poetry that you're composing. Say you have eight beats left in the stanza of poetry that you're composing. How many ways can you fill that in with long syllables and short syllables, where a long syllable takes two beats and a short syllable takes one beat? So there are many things that you can do. So just to give you examples, right? you could do long, 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 right? because each long is two beats. So if you do four longs, that's eight beats. So you could do long, 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 or you could do Short, 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 short. Right, that would also be a valid way of making eight beats. But there are lots of things in, in between that you could do, right? You could do short, long, long, short, long. You could do long, long, short, short, long. <laughs> okay, so how's, how do you state this question mathematically? So the question we're asking is, if you have a number n, we had eight, right? How many ways can you write that as a sum of ones and twos? Right? That's what we're asking. So the question in mathematical language about how many poetic meters are there of n beats consisting of long and short syllables, mathematically that's the question of asking how many ways can you write a number n as a sum of ones and twos? Right? Equivalent question. Okay, well let's try out some small examples. So suppose we take n equals one. Okay, if you just have one beat of poetry left, what can you do? <laughs> short. <laughs> okay, that's all you can do. Okay, so one is just one. There's nothing you can do there. Okay, suppose you have two beats of poetry left. What can you do? Yeah. Right, right. So you could do short, short, or you could do long. Exactly. Okay, when n equals three, how many ways are there? Three. Right, right. So you can do short, short, short. You can do short, long. You can do long, short. <laughs> so these examples were actually worked out in ancient texts, going back more than 2,000 years. And eventually, the ancients came up with a general answer of how many rhythms of shorts and longs there are having n beats for any number n. Okay, so the ancients came up with an ingenious way to obtain the general answer for n beats. How many ways can you write n beats uh, in terms of shorts and longs? Uh, this is the answer that was given. Uh, in these ancient texts, uh, particularly in the work of Hemachandra uh, in the year 1050. Uh, this procedure is written down in a very rigorous, uh, a very rigorous way. And here's the procedure. So what Hemachandra says is, write down the numbers one and two, okay? And then, so write those down on your piece of paper or your mental piece of paper, write down the numbers one and two. And then each subsequent number that you write down should be the sum of the previous two. And then the statement is that the nth number that you write down will give you the number of rhythms having n beats. Okay, so how does this go? We, so we write down the numbers one and two, and then what's the next number you write down? The sum of one and two, which is three. Five. 21. 34. 55, right. So each number that you wrote down was the sum of the previous two that you wrote down. And the eighth number here is the one I put in the box, is 34. That means that the answer to the question I was asking before, how many rhythms are there having eight beats, consisting of longs and shorts, is 34. These numbers, by, Sanskrit, by, by linguists and by Sanskrit scholars, these are called the Hemachandra numbers. <laughs> After the linguist Hemachandra, who lived about 1050 AD, which is a couple hundred years before Fibonacci, uh, 
So these are called the Hemachandra numbers after the, the linguist Hemachandra who first documented them and proved this recurrence property uh, that each number should be the sum of the previous two. But of course, uh, in India, by people who study mathematics, these are known as the Fibonacci numbers, who is an Italian mathematician who lived a couple hundred years later. So in a stanza of poetry, Hemachandra not only describes what the procedure is for generating uh, the sequence of numbers that tells you the number of rhythms having end beats, but he also explains why it works in a stanza of poetry. And so let me tell you the translation of that poetry. So here's his argument of why that method works. Okay, so here's what he says in poetry. <laughs> Every end beat rhythm ends in either a long or a short. And he ends it there, he's like, uh, and therefore it's all right. <laughs> OK, so why does this tell you? So every end beat rhythm ends in either a short or a long. That's a full, in these ancient Sanskrit texts, they would find really short ways of explaining things. <laughs> those that end in a short and those that end in a long, right? And the ones that end in a short, how many of those are there? Well, you have n minus 1 beats left to fill, right? If you're, if you're, having, if you're an end beat rhythm that ends in a short, then there are n minus 1 beats left to fill. How many of those are there? Hn minus 1, right? The number of rhythms having n minus 1 beats. So Hn is Hn minus 1 plus the number of rhythms that end in a long, right? We just counted the number of rhythms that end in a short. The number of rhythms that end in a long, that's going to be Hn minus 2 because there are now n minus 2 things left to fill, n minus 2 beats left to fill. So every n beat rhythm ends in a either a 1 or a 2. So say you have a representation of n as a sum of 1s and 2s. If it ends in a 1, then the number of ways of filling in the rest is hn minus 1. If it ends in a 2, the number of ways of filling in the rest is hn minus 2. And therefore, hn is equal to hn minus 1 plus hn minus 2. And so this is a proof given uh, by Hamachandra back in 1050 that this equation will allow you to determine how many rhythms there are having n beats. These numbers, which we call the Hemachandra numbers, or the Fibonacci numbers, they now form the basis of a huge mathematical and artistic theory. And the mathematical theory is that of recurrences. Recurrences just mean that new numbers you write down are, are written in terms of previous numbers you wrote down. That's what recurrence theory is. This is the most basic example of a recurrence. So they play a huge role in mathematics, but they also play a huge role in poetry, as we just saw. In fact, that's where these numbers first arose. The Fibonacci numbers, the Hemachandra numbers first arose. Uh, because of applications to poetry. Uh, they also play a, a huge role, these numbers, in the visual arts. If you've read this novel, The Da Vinci Code, it brings up uh, some of these connections. Uh, they're used in architecture. And my favorite example of where these numbers occur is in nature's art. Uh, the art occurring in nature uh, has Hamachandra numbers, these Fibonacci numbers, occurring everywhere. One really typical example of where the Hamachandra numbers occur in nature is if you've ever taken a pine cone. <laughs> in a pine cone, if you count the number of spirals, it always turns out to be a Hamachandra number. <laughs> and there's a good reason for that. It's the same reason why if you take a daisy, okay, so all daisies have this property unless some petals fell off. The number of petals on a daisy is always a Hamachandra number. <laughs> so if you count the number of petals on this daisy here, you'll find that there are 13 petals. <laughs> so remember the sequence, right? 1, 2, 3, 5, 8, 13, 21, 34, 55. 13 is one of those numbers. This daisy has 13 petals. And it's not a coincidence. If you look at other daisies, here's a white petal daisy. This petal, this flower here, it's a daisy, it has 21. The next Hamachandra number, it has 21 petals. This is my favorite photograph, which I always keep in my office. Here's a whole garden of daisies. And every single one of these daisies has 34 petals. And I know that because I actually sat there and counted all of them. <laughs> uh, it has to do with the way the petals grow. The, petals, the, seed, uh, the seedlings of the petals uh, grow in a spiral. And the most efficient way of packing little seeds in a spiral uh, turns out uh, to involve what's called the golden ratio. And the number of petals that you get when you, when you make a complete circle is always, is always a Hamachandra number. Are questions that still come up today, in, uh, for example, in music, 
So for example, they come up uh, tremendously in, in drumming, uh, which is one of the reasons that I first got interested in these numbers. Uh, if this tabla works, maybe I can. So there may be a part of the piece where, you're, where long and short uh, is, uh, is the rhythmic motif that's being used. Uh, that happens often. So for example, in tabla often, uh, you'll have longs and just compositions that involve only longs and shorts. Now that may seem very restrictive, but as we just saw, even with eight beat rhythms, there are 34 ways of combining longs and shorts into eight beats. And so, so for example, a long might be patigene, and a short might be tine. And so a lot, you can play eight beat combinations of just those two phrases. 